Um, yeah, so today we have as representative from the University of Strathclyde, University of Westminster and Mercy College. So the webinar today will be in circa en time with questions to the end. So if you write a question on English in chat, so it would have been super. So you can send it so that all see it, or private to me, so we will take questions all the time. So first, we'll go through a short introduction on what the zone is and what we can help you with. Därefter ska vi gå igenom några ofta ställda frågor som vi får. Därefter ska vi ha presentationer från Strathclyde, University of Westminster och till sist Mercy College. Därefter ska jag snacka lite om karriärmöjligheter efter att man har studerat akkurat detta. Och helt till sist ska vi ta en liten Q&A, där ni kan ställa frågor och få svar. Så det kan vara att det är någon av er som allerede har varit i kontakt med oss i Sonor, men för de er som inte helt vet vad vi driver med så är vi ganska kort beskrivet en gäng med tidigare utlandsstudenter som nu jobbar med att hjälpa norska elever att söka sig till studier i utlandet. Så våra studievägledare har ju studerat i bland annat Storbritannien, USA, Australien, Mexiko och Nederländerna. Så med andra ord, vi kan ge de bästa tipsen och dela väldigt mycket av våra erfarenheter. Personligen så har jag själv studerat i både USA och Storbritannien, så det är bara att se fram vissa ärenden där ute på Storbritannien. Så vi har ju då samarbete med universiteter i fem engelskspråkliga land: USA, Storbritannien, Singapore, Australien och New Zealand, men vi hjälper också med upptag till medicin och tandläkarstudier i central Europa. Så vi hjälper dig egentligen med att finna ett universitet baserat på vad du är ute efter och dina önskemål och din bakgrund. Och det är så viktigt att huska på att all hjälp som du får av oss är gratis och oförpliktande. Så du får ju bland annat utdelat en personlig vägledare som kan hjälpa med att se si vilken grad du ska välja, hur du lyssnar så där. Eh, allt som innegår i själva sökandet och stipender och det ekonomiska runt det. Och allt av praktisk information för avresa som går på detta med lånekassen, visum, eventuellt bolig och så vidare. Så tänkte jag att jag snabbt ska gå igenom någon ofta ställda frågor som vi får. Så det är nog det första vi får frågor om är ju detta om man får stötta lånekassen till studier i utlandet. Och då är svaret ganska enkelt ja, lånekassen stöttar alla våra samarbetsuniversitet. Detta går över till detta med pris. Det är ju inte så lätt att ge sån 100 så detta var du går inte att betala, men sidan det då varierar lite utifrån längden på graden, själva graden du tar och själva universitetet som du då börjar på. Ett annat frågeställ går ofta på detta med språktest, om det är nödvändigt eller nog man må. Så fyra eller bättre engelsk ger ofta fritak för en engelsk test, även om det är någon universiteter som kräver detta oavsett för sina sökare. Så ett annat frågeställ går ju på detta med frister, om det är ja, när, hur, lite såna typer ting och då är det grejt att fråga ganska tidigt i sökningsprocessen om det är en speciell dato som man måste förhålla sig till. Så utom det så går det ju mycket på detta med corona dagen. Det är ju inte att komma undan det sånt sett. Så som som ting ser ut nu så är det ju möjlighet för att resa till Storbritannien, Singapore, USA och till EU-land, även om det är många universitet som nu har en slags nettundervisning eller en hybridlösning där det är lite på campus och lite på nät. Um, ja, så är ju gränsen då till Australien och New Zealand stängt akkurat nu, men det är möjligt att antingen utsätta studiestarten, som för exempel visst du ska börja till våren och för exempel då lyssna börja det till nästa höst, det går an eller så går det också an att starta studierna online. Så, visst du ser på hemsidan vår så kan det också vara väldigt grejt att läsa om andra studenters sin erfaring. Det detta kan ju vara lite nyttigt visst du är lite osäker på vilket land du vill studera eller vilket universitet du vill börja på. Det går så att kontakta dessa studenterna direkt, visst det är något du önskar och ja, det kan vara ganska smart. Vi brukar ju också på sätta studenter som ska till samma ställe i kontakt med varandra. Så förlåt vi ser någon man önskar och då går det att snacka med de som ska till samma ställe som när för det reiser. Men tillbaka till selve tema för dagens presentation. Vi samarbetar ju som sagt med universitet som ligger i USA, Storbritannien, Australien och New Zealand. Idag ska det lära mer om studier i USA och i Storbritannien, men kontakta oss gärna där som du vill veta mer om de andra studiestäderna som vi kan tillby. So now moving on to the first presentation of the night. So we have University of Strathclyde that will tell you a little bit about their program and what their university can offer. So let's see. 
Hi, thank you so much for the introduction. I'm June Sades. So I will talk about the University of Strathclyde. So let me share the screen. Just so let me know if I'm not sharing. Uh, I hopefully. Uh, am I doing all right? Yeah, you're you're good. Okay, good. So I will start. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is uh, about the University of Strathclyde. So my name is June Koga Sadis. I'm a senior lecturer at the School of Government and Public Policy. Uh, I'm doing my research on the political violence and the conflict, authoritarian politics. In fact, I always kind of have a research visit every year to Oslo at the Prio Institution, if you know. So I'm very uh, kind of. Uh, excited about this opportunity to introduce my university uh, to you guys. Okay, so Strathclyde has multiple hours uh, uh, over the years, uh, in particular, so I'll just go next one. So, the UK University of the Year 2019 to 20, uh, the only university to win this prestigious hour twice. We also got the Scottish University of the Year 2020 by Times and the Sunday Times. Uh, in addition, we got a uh, Queen's Anniversary Prize for Fire, sorry, Higher and Further Education 2019, and so on, so on. So we got we are multi award winning uh, <clears throat> winner university. Uh, just more generally, this is the large, third largest university in Scotland. So it's a leading international technological university differentiated by the quality of our research and also the interaction with uh, industry. So we have a wide research community globally, uh, in particular, so in the recent research excellent framework, a uh, government led benchmarking exercise measuring the quality of research in higher education institutions, we were identified as one of the top 20 research intensive universities in the UK. In particular, so where are we located? So we are in the heart of the city, Glasgow. So our campus is a short walk from two mainline railway stations. Uh, bus station and the subway to help you get around the city and to visit the rest of the UK. So I've uh, lived here for like five years. Uh, I, I located from the United States and I really enjoy the city. So Glasgow is such a great place to live and walk around. Um, so we are really located in the heart of this city center of Glasgow. Okay, so now I kind of make a transition to more about our dep department, so government and public policy and international relations. So our uh, department or school of government and public policy is our, uh, it's the 11th in the UK REF in 2014. So this is the kind of research based ranks of the university or institutions within the United uh, UK. So we are currently 11th, but it's it's basically top 10 in terms of actual ranks. Uh, in terms of research ranks, I think we are definitely top 10. So we are, we are the second in Scotland, but basically Edinburgh and uh, Strathclyde, uh, the Edinburgh, I think is the first, but our, in terms of the actual research ref ranks, it's pretty very similar. So it's a very in, uh, in a kind of good ranks uh, among other university. We have a diverse, group of people as a staff, also as a student body. So as I said, we have a very strong research community. So the, everything is research-led learning. So um, in terms of the, what we do, so as I said, we are really uh, proud of what we do in terms of the producing research. So world-class global research, award-winning teaching, and also we are good at preparing you guys to Kind of apply the skill set you learned to the real world. Uh, we also want to kind of highlight that what we don't do. <clears throat> so as we said, as I said, excuse me, <laughs> just I need to breathe. Um, so we are really good at uh, uh, producing applied science research, uh, in particular kind of statistic or uh, quantitative based research. Um, but we are uh, none of the uh, <clears throat> So, sorry, no, none of our academic researchers do a political philosophy. 
we don't do so much of a critical theory, except that the one faculty uh, is focused on the feminism. So if you're really interested in political philosophy or critical theory, unfortunately, we are not necessarily good at providing this um, type of research. So as already mentioned, but socially uh, in Glasgow, because we are located in the city of city center of Glasgow, we have many opportunities to uh, hang out in the city, which might uh, be really good for uh, your social life. <clears throat> Uh, so what can we expect in the School of Government and Public Policy? So uh, we have a really diverse group of people and in particular, we have a larger number of international staff. So we have currently 20, total 20 staff in the Department of Politics and International Relations. 15 of them are from uh, outside the UK, North America, uh, South America, Asia and Europe. So I'm from Japan and I got training or PhD in the United States. Uh, a good number of colleagues also trained in the United States. So many are located from the US to here, but also of course other countries in Europe, they got PhD in, um, yeah, so outside the UK and move into Scotland. <clears throat> so uh, it's a research really, uh, we have a very strong group of academic who are really strong at their own research. So the teaching and education are also based on the strengths in our research. Uh, in terms of the MSc classes, so graduate or master classes, so we do not have any in-class exam regardless of this pandemic crisis. So we more encourage students to write their own research papers uh, rather than kind of memorizing the um, memorizing the knowledge and to take exam. <clears throat> uh, we also re uh, recently redesigned the undergraduate curriculum in order to put more focus on the applied skill set. So political science research design are going to be uh, or to, uh, this class is offered for the second year undergraduate education. We also have a uh, newly designed class which offer the applied quantitative or statistical method mainly to use R in the third year of the undergraduate uh, classes. So R is, I'm currently teaching R to the uh, graduate or master MSc classes, but uh, in a redesigned undergraduate curriculum, we are also using our statistical, this R is statistical programming or program or programming language um, uh, to uh, undergraduate third year. Uh, in addition, we offer advanced quantitative uh, method classes too, if you are interested in. Uh, right, so work placement opportunity in honors or fourth year, quantitative classes are also option in IR MSc programs. So again, it's a applied skill, more specifically quantitative or statistical skill set are encouraged to be uh, to learn in, in uh, for under both undergraduate and graduate master students. <clears throat> so in terms of actual degree structure, so this is the undergraduate BA uh, degree structure. So as you can see, it's, sorry, it's a kind of difficult to read. But the first year you can choose three subjects, subject one, two, three, you can choose uh, three subjects uh, in, in the field discipline of politics, including international relations. Second year, you choose first subject, second subject. And eventually in the third year, you have to pick one important subject or you pick two type of subject. And fourth year honors degree, you choose either single or joint, um, joint, uh, joint classes, a joint degree, sorry. So as, as I said, in, the, in terms of the joint degree, you can choose a combination of politics, IR, and different uh, subject area. So possible subject combinations include, uh, of course, education, English, uh, English creative writing, French history, law, and so on and so on. So as you can see, all of these are 
potential options for you to take, uh, jointly take, in addition to the courses which we, our department will offer. So there are many options that you can choose from. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so flexible degree structure in terms of undergraduate students, you can, so it's a kind of like a repeated the same thing, but you can choose the two main subjects within your degree at the end of the first year, year one. <clears throat> In principle, you can continue into year two with any of the two subjects studied in the first year. Single and joint honors combinations are possible depending on the subject studied. Uh, exit with a BA pass degree at the end of year three is potentially possible if desired. Okay. So here, from starting here, um, Right, so just to give, giving another additional overview of the undergraduate degree. So description of undergraduate international relations. So international relations are, it's a subfield of political science in the strategic So many uh, in potentially in other UK uh, institution, international relations are kind of have a different discipline uh, in not that we see in the political science, but at strategic in our department and the school, IR is one of the subfield in political science. So that means that is if you are coming to take international relations class, that is first year you have to take introduction to politics because it's a subfield of political science. Second year, you can teach uh, take international relations and global politics. And as I said, it's applied skill set, which is research design, kind of intro to quantitative of, or statistical design. In the third year, uh, you take this essential readings in international relations discipline, uh, quantitative method for political science, and some of the area studies class. In the final year, honors year, you have many options that you can choose from. from. Uh, some of the things that you might be interested in include U.S. national security, international security, uh, IR theory, and so on. So class listed, classes listed at the third year and uh, honors year may be taken in either year. So there are many multiple options uh, that you can consider. So finally, the fourth year or honors dissertation. So there the dissertation have a single or <coughs> joint options. So you don't have to decide until late third year or summer before honors year. So this is 20 credits, so it's equivalent to one class. So we offer individual supervisor for each student. So you can have a good, um, if you want, you can have a really good interaction with uh, inter individual supervision from top researchers in our university. Uh, specialized preparation class uh, starts in third year. We also have much for group workshop to in the process of making uh, dissertations. <clears throat> so yeah, so I'm and I include, uh, so Amy, so she's uh, now currently member of a parliament, NGO representative on team, uh, the militarizing, the, uh, it's a, it's a, she went to Colombia to talk about the post-conflict negotiation, skill development Scotland as a growth and inward investment graduate in town, uh, research economist at uh, a bigger economics uh, company, and so on. Okay. Sorry, just uh, probably three or four more minutes. So I will now start move on. So we, we talked about the undergraduate education in our university, uh, excuse me, in uh, international relations and political, political science, uh, science uh, department. So now we move on to MSc, graduate or master degree. So one first one we offer, MSc International Relation. So this is our study, uh, the students who come to this program will study uh, cooperation uh, of interstate cooperation or multinational institution. So this necessary credit or classes that would include contemporary IR, debating IR theory, international institution, and regimes principle of research design. So these are basically basic IR 
theory. In addition, we have we uh, ask students to take research design class and optional classes that, uh, as I said, one of the faculty is strong in feminism, so she she will teach feminism and international relations. Uh, but most of us are stronger in terms of applied risk or quantitative based research so contemporary security challenges and response and so on in addition we have a number of quantitative methods based on the r uh, are offered for the graduate level so that is an option but many students would take and other department can also also uh, offer various IR related topic, including the international law and environmental law and stuff. Okay. And so the, another program we have is a joint program with the law school and the politics. So MSC slash LLM international relations law and security program. So it's a coordinated by politics and law school. Uh, it's interdisciplinary between security issues and relationship in this issue with law, so international law. So compulsory classes include contemporary security and principal research design or legal research method and skills. Optional classes include uh, one of the bill, um, I, I would just skip this because it's just too much detail but you can basically combination get the combination of both politics and law related uh, classes so msc dissertation is a 10,000 word dissertation essentially it's a uh, we train students to write the first draft that can be potentially submitted and published in academic article so original research idea on the topic of what you choose uh, is, can be chosen. So independent research with guidance by uh, advisor. So meaning that uh, the same as undergraduate, but we of course uh, pay, pay more attention and more serious interaction, uh, individual interaction with students and uh, between students and uh, what one of the researchers or staff, academic staff in our department. So in terms of the method, it's either quantitative or qualitative. Uh, so it's a very flexible. Although we tend to kind of encourage students to take uh, quantitative classes. So many people use quantitative analysis. Opportunity for field placement dissertation. So research produced during placement included um, offset word count. So again, so some of the students who take this uh, program and graduated include uh, US House of Representative legislative aid, uh, data scientist or project manager, data recruiter, and a uh, couple of people went further to study uh, various, various uh, research, but including law school in the United States. So this is the last slide. Uh, so entry requirement, if you are interested in our program, uh, this is the entry requirement. So for undergraduate study, uh, the university generally requires the upper secondary leaving certificate, final examination of grade four or above. English at grade four or above maybe substitutes the need to take an additional English language test such as something. Uh, to be considered for admission to a taught master. So this is a graduate or um, master degree. If you are interested in master degree, graduate degree, uh, you should hold a bachelor's degree BA with an overall average of C or better. Hmm. For admission to research applicants, I should hold a bachelor's degree with an overall average of B or better and should also be in possession of a master degree and some experience of research. So, of course, um, you know, if you have any questions, just go, go to this link and please contact any of the recruitment officer in the university. Thank you so much. Thank you, June. Um, so now we're moving a little bit further south in the UK. So time for Barbara over at University of Westminster. Okay, thank you. I'll just share my screen with you. June, I think you've got... Let's go. Let's go. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, my name is Barbara Calhar. I'm from the international recruitment team at the University of Westminster in London. So I'll tell you a little bit about our university and about the courses that we offer in politics and international relations then. So first of all, just an overview of London. Um, so some of you have probably um, visited London before on holiday. You might have studied there before, lived or worked there even. So um, you'll know what a fantastic global city it is. We're very lucky to be based in the heart of London. You can see there the variety of culture, industry links that there are in the capital. There's a lot of history there to discover as well. Lots of things to keep you entertained outside of your studies, um, such as sport, uh, getting out and about, shopping, uh, museums, galleries, music, entertainment. So lots to see and do as a student in London. And this is where we're located then. So we're based very centrally. These are our central London locations, close to lots of famous landmarks, such as, um, you know, we're within walking distance of the Buckingham Palace. We're very close to the British Museum. Um, this is a busy commercial part of the capital. So it's a great location to be in. And then we've also got another campus, which is in Northwest London. That's our Harrow campus and home to our creative and media programs. So here you can see where we are on the London underground map. So close to lots of stations in central London and very easy to reach from other parts of the capital. So in um, the central London campuses then, we've got um, computer science, engineering, life sciences, social sciences. Um, we've got architecture and tourism and um, transport courses and business at the Marlebone campus, then creative and media programs at our Harrow campus outside central London. And specifically for humanities and social sciences, um, including politics and international relations, those are based at our Regent campus, which is just next to Oxford Circus Tube Station. Um, so a very busy part of the city. Um, this is our most historic building at the university because at Westminster we've got a very long history going back to 1838. We were the first polytechnic in the country and this is the original polytechnic building at the Regent campus. And then just around the corner, we have Westminster Law School as well, and the um, Social Sciences and Humanities Library. So here you've got all of the programmes that we offer in politics and IR. So you've got um, quite a selection of different um, bachelor's degrees there. So you can focus specifically on either politics or international relations and then you've got a couple of combinations there as well and you can also combine the study of international relations with a language as well and then for master's programs we've got a few um, we've got a few co courses there looking at energy and environmental change there's international relations and democratic politics, and then you can look at international relations and security as well. Um, going on to our website and looking on the course information pages will give you a lot of detailed information about the structure of the programmes. You'll get a description of all the modules that you'll be um, taking, lots of extra information there as well. We've got some film clips on the course information pages too. So, um, yeah, why Westminster then? So uh, we're, we've got a fantastic location that I mentioned before. So we're very lucky to be able to take our, our students to, to visit um, places that are relevant to their programme. So we have field trips going to the House of Parliament, various government departments, uh, different international organisations and NGOs as well. Um, students have been visiting the, um, the United Nations as well in Geneva as part of their studies. So it's a great opportunity to get some real practical hands-on experience there. So we've got an excellent centre for the study of democracy. Uh, this is um, a very well-established research group at the university and um, that's been running for over 25 years now. So they organise lots of different talks and invite guest speakers to come in to speak to students. In the past, we've had uh, lots of high profile speakers come and talk at the university, including the Dalai Lama, 
even a few years ago. And so um, the, uh, the Centre for the Study of Democracy organised lot, organises lots of these interesting events for our students. We've also got the Democratic Education Network, which holds an annual conference as well, so students can get involved in um, the work that they do. They organise lots of different trips and um, talks as well. Um, you can have a look at their website for more details about the different events that they get involved in. Uh, we've also got um, a very active Model United Nations at Westminster. We've hosted international Model UN conferences in recent years. And so that's also a very popular society to get involved in at the university. Um, you've got the opportunity on many of our bachelor's programmes to do a work placement year or an, an international study year. So you can study at one of our partner universities as part of your degree. And then the career service at the university, that's um, very good at supporting students. When it comes to looking for internships, organising mentoring, because that's a very important part of what we do at Westminster. Okay, so here you've got our entry requirements then for undergraduate and postgraduate courses at the university. Um, we've got a country specific information page for Norway. So if you go to the international section of the website, um, go to the countries and then you'll see Norway listed there. So that will give you all of the requirements in detail as well. Okay, and here you've got the tuition fees. So for undergraduate programmes, it's the same tuition fee for all courses. For postgraduate master's programmes, it varies depending on the course and it gives you the exact fee on the course information page. And then you've also got information about scholarships online too. So we do have a variety of different scholarships for our undergraduate and postgraduate programmes. So you can find out full details of them on the website. It'll tell you what we've got and give you instructions about how to apply. Okay, so how to apply for our undergraduate programmes, that's a standard application for UCAS, which is used by all UK universities. And then for postgraduate, it's UCAS postgraduate. So you'll need um, to include a personal statement with your application, you'll need a reference as well, and the transcripts of your previous studies too. So we've got online um, open days coming up over the next couple of months. So if you have a look on our website, it will give you details of the open days we've got on in November. So there'll be virtual events so you can find out a lot more about the university and our programmes there. OK, and here you've got some other links as well to our um, um, social media so you can find out a lot through there. We've got international student bloggers so you can read about their experiences. Uh, my colleague uh, Michele, um, he looks after Europe and um, so if you've got any questions you can always contact him as well and um, you've got the dates there for the latest virtual open days. Okay I think that's my last slide yep so thank you for your attention. Okay, so moving across the pond, if as you might call it, uh, so we're moving on to Sonia over at Mercy College in New York. Joining her will be Professor uh, Albrecht, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hello, uh, Professor Albrecht and I are coming to you live from New York City and Mercy College. So thank you so much, Sonar. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're excited to be here tell you a little bit about Mercy as a whole to start, and then I will hand it on over to Dr. Elbret, who is our Associate Dean for the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences and also an Assistant Professor in the program. So my name is Sonia. I work with all of our international students here at Mercy and with anyone who applies through Sonar. We love Sonar. Um, we have about 25 Norwegian students on our campus right now, and I think more than half of them came through Sonar. So. Normally, in a normal year, I would have been over there once at least by now and would be really excited about coming back for spring. So we'll see how this plays out. Just got a notification that the vaccine works on my phone, so maybe see you guys in March. To start, I want to let you know about some of the favorite things 
I think were my favorite things about Mercy. So number one is definitely our location. Like I said, I'm coming to you from New York. I am coming to you from Manhattan. So right down there in the middle bottom, you see we have a Manhattan campus. A little bit more north, we've got Dobbs Ferry. And on the right there, we have the Bronx. So our campuses are located all throughout the city. We have a very central location right by the Empire State Building. If you've traveled to the US, traveled to New York, you've probably looked up on 34th and 6th and seen the Empire State Building there, maybe gone up to the top. If you were to look down across the street, you'd see Mercy College. So when I go to work, one of my favorite things is getting off the subway, looking up and thinking, oh my gosh, I am the center of so many things, center of business, center of things like international relations, which I'm excited to tell you about. And our campuses really give you access to not only great opportunities on campus, but also off campus, whether that's internships, whether that's careers after you graduate, or just you know eating all of the delicious food in New York. So I wanna talk a little bit about Sonar and the advantages you get applying through Sonar. Um, I am your go-to person for anything application, admission, visa related. So Sonar Advantages, we have a great partnership with Sonar that gives you all of these wonderful things at the bottom here that you see to make your life easier as you apply, save you money, save you time, and open you up to opportunities in New York. So one great thing is that you will actually get to start as a sophomore here in the United States. Sophomore means in your second year. So in the United States, bachelor's degrees are four years long usually. If you're coming from Norway, if you're coming from Sonar, you're actually going to start in your second year. So you're skipping some of the programs and some of the classes that you already took through your secondary school and that are listed on your written all. And you'll get to get right into, maybe if you'd like to start taking international relations classes the first semester, you're welcome to start doing that as you work with your advisor on building your schedule. We also can waive your English proficiency score. Um, I believe Barbara talked a little bit about how Westminster can waive that for you too based on your English score. We do the same thing. If you score a four above on your English test or your IB English test, we'll waive that for you. You don't have to take TOEFL or IELTS. You'll be admitted to the program based on um, that score. We also offer a Sonar specific scholarship. So if you are admitted through Sonar, you'll get that scholarship. We'll also assist with the loan cost and funding and applying for that. With that whole package all together, to come to Mercy, you're gonna pay about $1,000 a year, and that includes living on campus, so it's a pretty great deal. And also, if you're thinking, I just wanna come for a semester, I wanna do a gap year, you can do that. And you can still take classes in international relations and diplomacy. We work with you to pick those classes, and we are happy to have you on campus for as long as you'd like to come. So we do have five schools. I will specifically, and we will specifically, be talking about the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, but we do have five schools. We have over 90 programs at the bachelor and master level. We've got about 10,000 students on campus from over 50, for actually not over, right under 50 countries. We've got 49 countries represented on campus. But we are here to talk about the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences and also the International Relations and Diplomacy Program. So like I said, that is a Bachelor of Science degree. It's usually four years, it's three years for you. In the International Relations and Diplomacy Program, which I know a little bit about, but um, Dr. Albright knows much more about, and I'll hand it over to him in just a second, but you'll learn about things like globalization, negotiation, conflict resolution, world leadership. So if you're thinking about, hey, maybe I want to do business, maybe I want to do international relations, I would love to work at the UN, I would love to get experience in New York, then this is a really good option for you that you're welcome to pair with other majors. Um, in the US, it's pretty easy to kind of major and minor and get a lot of different experiences. But this major really offers you hands-on experience, world-renowned faculty, and access to internships and experiences that you wouldn't get at any other college. So with that said, I want to show you this slide of this is our international students um, in the middle there. That's Bogdana. She'd be your international student advisor here. Once you get to Mercy, she'll help you with your visa process with um, arrival, departure, all of that fun stuff. So this is a photograph, I think, from about two years ago um, when we did a tour to the UN with all of our international students. So they got to experience it. Um, that room probably, sadly, looks just as empty right now. Um, but we love to take our international students to the UN multiple times a year, give you that experience whether or not you're in this program. And hopefully, uh, if you come to Mercy and you participate in the program, you'll get to do our Model UN, our International Student Club, and you'll get to take advantage of some really great contacts and connections that we have in the United Nations that, like I said, you won't get through many of the other colleges in the New York area. 
So with that said, I would like to introduce Dr. Eduardo Albrecht, our Associate Dean and Professor in the program, and I'll hand it over to you to tell us more about all the wonderful benefits of coming to Mercy and learning with us. Thank you very much, Sonia, and um, thank you to everybody for organizing this. I would like to mention that when Sonia told me that she was going to speak with, uh, with Sonar, I, I, I asked that I could participate because I've worked with students from Norway that have come to Mercy College through Sonar, and I was always very impressed with the, the quality and the enthusiasm of the students. In particular, the, uh, the students have gone on to, to really uh, be successful in their fields in a way that, uh, that, that makes me very proud of having worked with them. And uh, therefore, I, I jumped on the opportunity to be able to, to come here and speak to you about the, uh, the school and the program. So I, I have two hats. The first is as associate dean of the school. So I'll talk a little bit about the, the school in general and some of the programs that we have and the approach that we take to, to edu education. Then I'll also talk about my uh, role as program director of international relations and diplomacy, which is one of the programs at the school. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But first, let me start with talking about the school. Now, our school has many different programs, including uh, criminal justice, sociology, legal studies. So you can, you can really study a number of things. However, all of the programs have one thing in common. We uh, emphasize participation by students, a kind of learning by doing approach, which includes service learning. So there's a lot of uh, engagement with the community. It includes uh, internships which means that you, you learn by being on the job and getting credit for that. You there's a lot of practicum classes. There's a lot of apprenticeships. There's a lot of research that you do with faculty. So there's an emphasis on learning by doing in our school, or what some people call experiential learning. You learn as an experience, because we believe that it's not just about the academics and, and, the, and the textbook. It's also about practicing your uh, chosen field of, uh, of occupation. So this, is, this goes across all programs. A second characteristic that distinguishes us is the focus on research. I mentioned earlier how students can work with uh, faculty on their own research. This is very important to us because we believe that students are not here only to learn, but to learn with faculty. And uh, all of our faculty are engaged in scholarly activity. This is a, a one of the mainstays of our of our uh, profession. We don't just teach, we also do research. So to have students participate in that research, often through uh, uh, paid employment as research assistants, so whether it's um, uh, through, a, through, a, through a grant or through a scholarship, it is very possible and not too difficult for a willing and eager student to do research with faculty here. And that can be research in my program, international relations, but also in, as I said earlier, uh, legal studies, sociology, criminal justice, psychology, and so forth. So the two, two main things are learning by doing and a lot of research, research with faculty. Now let me spend a minute on our program, international relations and diplomacy. This is a, a what, what, what they call here a boutique program which means that it's uh, really a kind of um, a, a smallish program meant for a select group of students. And then we can really focus on providing the type of uh, personalized attention that is necessary to make sure that these students succeed not only in the program, but in a very competitive career. You can imagine working for the United Nations uh, or as a diplomat is not, is not something that everybody can be automatically be successful at. It requires a lot of uh, training and pruning. So to have a, a smallish program that allows our faculty to really focus on each individual grants us that possibility to, to make, really make a difference in the students' lives. So there's a number of ways in which we, we do this, this, this close uh, mentoring, if you will, of, of students in the program. The first is through participation in what is called the Model United Nations. Now, for those of you that, that have already some experience with this, uh, with the Model United Nations, you, already, you, you know what it is. 
But for those of you that, that have, uh, f uh, that maybe this is the first time that you hear about it, Model United Nations is when students pretend to represent a country at a pretend United Nations meeting. Now, I say pretend because you're, you're obviously not a diplomat yet, but aside from that simulation, everything else is exactly the same as if you were a diplomat. You have to be able to dress the part, you have to be able to speak in the correct way, you have to be able to write, you have to be able to negotiate in the right way. And it's, it's quite an event. There's more than 5,000 students from all over the world that gather here in New York in Midtown, just a couple of blocks away from our Manhattan campus and compete in this, uh, in this, in this um, Model United Nations competition representing any number of countries. We, Mercy College has represented Ethiopia, Mexico, Russia. So you have to learn about the country you're representing and then you, you negotiate as if you were a, a diplomat. Now this is a, a competitive and uh, I would say even <clears throat> uh, very, uh, uh, very demanding activity. So students will, will, will spend an entire semester preparing for it. And then it's a, a five day affair and students live in the hotel where these, uh, this competition is being held. Um, I'd also like to point out that our uh, Mercy College has a policy in which we, we pay students hotel and participation fees, which could be upwards of $1,000 per student while other, other institutions have students paid for their, their own participation. So this, this is something that we sponsor as a, as a, as a college. And in those, those five days, those five demanding days, students compete. Now, Mercy College has repeatedly won the top three honors places in these competitions. And this is because of the, the, the nature of our program, the way that we train individual um, students to be able to, to be successful. So we're very proud of that, that competition because what it does is that it, it grants students a kind of um, understanding of what it would take to then work in the United Nations. And in fact, um, the next step after the United Nations competition, the model United Nations competitions, is we um, arrange for students to have internships in the actual United Nations. This is possible thanks to the fact that our faculty have 30 plus year experience working as officers in the United Nations and therefore have the connections that can make that possible. So our students have access to these very valuable internships and very competitive internships that again are, are not easy to get unless you work through a, uh, an organization like Mercy College that has the connections that can make that happen. And I would say that 100% of the students that have, uh, that that deserve to, to be able to have that internship, get that internship because of the, the effort that our faculty has been able to place um, in, in making that happen. Now, having an internship at the United Nations is a, is a very exciting experience, especially since these internships are, are doing the actual work of the United Nations. So you may work in any number of the many United Nations agencies, for example, with uh, economic affairs, political affairs, you may work in humanitarian affairs, or perhaps maybe um, education, cultural issues, humanitarian issues, depending on, on your interest. Once that, that internship is successfully completed, students then have an opportunity to then apply for actual jobs in the United Nations or any number of uh, affiliated organizations, either in New York City or maybe traveling abroad, working in the country offices and getting some experience traveling abroad. And all this is, um, you get credit for this. So this is uh, all going towards your, your degree credits. So um, to wrap up, the Model United Nations, internships at the UN, research, research with faculty. It, at this moment, I've, I'm, I've hired five research assistants from Mercy College to help work on my own research. So learning by doing, service, service towards the community, volunteering with the community, all of these things make up an experience at Mercy College. And I've seen Students from Sonar have always been extremely successful in, uh, in this format and working with this format. So we're very excited to, to be able to host you here at New York City, in New York City. So thanks, Sonia. I hope I didn't go over my allotted time. I'll hand it back over to you. No, that was perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to also end it there. Um, Lisa, are we going into questions now? Um, 
So we have a few more slides to go through. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, so that was it from Mercy College. Thank you guys so much. So da skal vi snakke litt mer om karrieremuligheter for de som vil studere internasjonale relasjoner og politikk. Nå tok jo han professoren og gikk litt sånn kort gjennom det, og ja, det er egentlig jeg skal bare spe litt på med informasjonen som det han nevnte. Så en av karriereretningene er jo da å bli diplomat, så utenriksdepartementets aspirantopptak er også en vanlig måte å bli rekruttert til utenrikstjenesten. Så så aspirantopplæringen gis normalt til de som har tatt opp som aspiranter, og før utreise til utenriksstasjoner er det også vanlig å bli med på noen forberedende kurs, rett og slett. Dette er et treårig trainee-program for de som vil ha en fast jobb i utenrikstjenesten. Årlig tas det opp om lag 15 aspiranter, og det er anbefalt at man kan et fjerde språk, i tillegg til å si norsk, engelsk og typ videregående fag, så det kan fint å fokusere på disse FN-språkene da. I tillegg så er jo alt annet egentlig et pluss, sånn sett. Så diplomanter arbeider jo i bunn og grunn for å skape og opprettholde et godt forhold mellom Norge og landet som man er stasjonert i. Og som diplomat så er man egentlig en uoffisiell representant for Norge i utlandet. Og det viktigste er egentlig å fremme norske interesser i landet som man er stasjonert i, da. Så, ja. Det går jo også an å jobbe i offentlig administrasjon, hvis man tar en grad innenfor internasjonale relasjoner og politikk. Så arbeidsoppgavene kan jo variere veldig mye fra arbeidsplass til arbeidsplass. Hvis du ser for deg et spesielt sted du har lyst til å jobbe, eller noe som du absolutt vil, så kan det være lurt å ta kontakt med dem allerede nå. Sånn, ja, hvis du ser for deg at du vil studere, eller ja, ikke vil studere, vil jobbe i for eksempel Norad, det kan være greit å spørre hva de på en måte anbefaler, og hva slags utdannelse som deres ansatte gjør nå. Ja, for å tilrettelegge rett og slett, og gjøre det enkelt som mulig. Så de vanligste yrkene som de som har tatt utdannelse innenfor dette feltet, har ofte titlene rådgiver, konsulent og saksbehandler, så dette er generelt sett vanlige stillingsnavn, for de som jobber i det offentlige, og det sier egentlig ikke så alt for mye hva man faktisk gjør i jobben. Så noen arbeidsoppgaver innenfor dette kan jo gå på forskning, prosjektarbeid, saksbehandling og så videre. Men det viktigste du får ut av å studere internasjonale relasjoner og politikk er en utdannelse. Det gir deg altså enda større muligheter enn det jeg har snakket om nå, og egentlig bare innebygger det som professoren akkurat har fortalt om. En utdanning gir ikke nødvendigvis et yrke, sånn som det gjorde med foreldregenerasjonen, men det gir deg kunnskap om hvordan du skal sette sammen informasjon, og også en fleksibilitet, og egentlig da du får evnen til å omstille deg, noe som blir høyt verdsatt i dagens jobbmarked. Det er også noen andre internasjonale organisasjoner hvor det er mulighet til å jobbe, etter at man har tatt en slik type utdannelse, så det er jo mye morsomt å velge, rett og slett. Og ja, det går også over til noen eksempler i privat næringsliv, der det også er mulig å jobbe. Så med andre ord, så er det ikke en sånn typ Z-karriere, man blir ikke et typisk sånn yrke, men det er veldig mye valgfrihet, og du har veldig mye forskjellig du kan jobbe med, litt ut fra hva du tar spesialisering i, eventuelt mastergrad i, sånne type ting. Så... So now moving on to the questions. Um, so I have received a few questions. Um, so June from University of Strathclyde had to leave, unfortunately. So it will be just the three of us. Um, so first off, I know that you guys, well, I know that June briefly mentioned it, but what are some jobs that previous mm -hmm. alumni currently have? Okay, well, um, <laughs> um, our graduates go on to a variety of different organizations, so sort of various governmental departments, uh, NGOs, working for charities, some going to journalism, um, um, so yeah, a variety of different fields really, yeah. Um, I don't have um, sort of like the exact details on me, but um, on our course information pages and over on each course, it tells you about careers and you've got some examples of careers there as well. 
but those are the types of fields that um, people go on to. Some continue after doing a bachelor's degree and go straight on to a master's. Some go into research because, as I mentioned, that's a very sort of like well-established part of the university. Yeah. Yeah, our students go on to do very similar things. The major at Mercy is pretty unique in that it also allows you to double major or minor or also get experience in a lot of other fields. So we have a lot of students that will maybe also major in Spanish or they'll major in business or they might major in data analytics. So it's kind of a nice mix that leads them to lots of different careers, whether that's in business. We have some students that go on to work in the financial sector because we're pretty close to um, FIDI or the financial district. So we have students that go on to that. We have a lot that go on to work in government, whether that's abroad or in the US. Um, international students, like Professor Albert mentioned, a lot of our international students do the UN internships and their goal is to be a diplomat or to be um, a foreign service worker or a international civil servant or an international civil service, <laughs> I guess is how you'd say that. And then we also do have a lot of students that go on to seek their master's degree in one of the phenomenal institutions in New York. Uh, Mercy has a bachelor's degree in international relations and diplomacy, so we don't have a master's level degree program in that, but we have great kind of bridge programs that where students go on to maybe get their master of public policy at NYU or Columbia or similar colleges like that. So I think it's a cool major in that you have a lot of options, but you can also say, I want to be a diplomat, go in, focus on that, get an internship at the UN, and that can be your goal. I think it's kind of either or you definitely know what you want to do or you're just really interested in the cultural side of it, the international side of it, and it matches really well. Definitely true. Um, so second question, what are some typical master's degrees that people choose after, um, after getting their degree in public relations or politics? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got some master's degrees in the same area. So, um, the postgraduate courses that we've got, we've got international relations and democratic politics, there's international relations and security, uh, then we've got a general international relations master's degree and you know that's got a lot of different options available within it, so um, you've got a couple of core modules which are compulsory, everyone has to do a dissertation as well as part of that master's degree, but then they've got um, a wide choice of different options to choose from. So they can focus on the Middle East or the European Union. They can look at um, um, state politics and violence. They can look at energy security. Um, so that's quite um, a broad choice of different subjects that they can choose from there. And then we've got another more focused program, which is the um, master's degree that we've got on um, energy and environmental change. And then post masters, there's yeah, yeah, various um, yeah students go on to do various different topics for their um, master of um, philosophy and their PhD studies. Okay. But then um, in London as well, you've got lots of other institutions offering master's degrees in these areas. So um, students don't always stay at Westminster, they go on to a different institution for their postgraduate studies. I, so the next question is about internship opportunities. I know that Mercy talked quite a bit about it. Would you mind telling a little bit more about internship uh, opportunities at University of Westminster, Barbara? Mm -hmm, yeah, so when it comes to um, the internships then, um, so the Career Development Centre that helps to um, support students when it comes to um, looking for internships, so it may, it may be something within the civil service, it could be working with an NGO, um, they could go into um, teaching even for an internship as well. Um, so there are quite a few different um, sort of options available there and um, yeah they don't have students wouldn't have to do an internship in the UK it could be something that they do internationally yeah so on our bachelor's degrees um, students have got the option to do a full year 
um, either um, doing a work placement or volunteering or if they're doing one of the um, international relations subjects combined with a language, they could spend that year studying at one of our partner universities. Perfect. Um, are there any research opportunities available? Within, well, for, PH, for PhD, then there's a lot available there, yeah. Yeah, and as Professor Albright mentioned, he just personally hired five research assistants. So it depends on, I mean, honestly, it depends on your relationship with the professor, what programs and research subjects they're interested in, and if that aligns with your interests. So I know we talked a lot about how, you know, maybe you're interested in economics or humanitarian issues, women and gender issues, public health. So a lot of our students, I would say the most common track for our international students and even our Norwegian students is getting their bachelor's with us in three years and going on to our MBA program, which is a one-year program, if you go full-time and do the accelerated option of the MBA. So you can technically do a three plus one program where you're getting your bachelor and your master, or your bachelor, or your MBA in four years. And that progresses usually international relations as the, as the bachelor's degree onto the MBA in international relations or, or sorry, international business or management. Okay. Um, I think that was the last question of the night, unless anything pops up last minute. I just want to thank you guys both or everyone that attended. Um, it was a great presentation and great questions. So I appreciate it. And oh, you're welcome. welcome. We appreciate you too. Um, yeah, thanks for hosting. Um, so I can just share just really quickly, um, just the contact information. If you guys want to contact anyone <laughs> or you can contact us directly and we'll help you with everything that goes into, um, you know, the application process, everything like that. We'll just contact us if you have any questions or anything we can help with. And that's it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great okay. night. You Thank too. You Take care. Bye Thanks bye. again. Bye bye. Stay safe. <laughs>